resurrecting old cultures from two years ago dormant in my fridge and this is my journey that follows well I've placed my leftover starter in my bread making pan and I've used this recipe as I had a lot of starter left over after I fed these and now I'm going to take it to my bread machine and let it mix on the dough setting going to select number 8 and press start and that will be ready in an hour and 30 So I let it do its mixing and adjust the mixture with extra flour if I think it needs it. Seems to be boiling up okay, so I think we should be alright. I don't think it needs extra flour or water. So I let it do its thing. It will be interesting to see how much it rises. So my dough has finished kneading and it's been sitting in the pan for a couple of hours. Looks like it's uh, doubled in size. I'm about to take it out and then pop it in to a Dutch oven, which is an old stone pot that I've had for many years. And, and I'll let it rise uh, in double in size and then I'll bake it off. So now I'm just going to lift it and fold it over. It's quite stretchy, feels good. I think all the quantities I've had have been a good size. A good amount. I'll boil it up as best I can with my left hand. And it into my Dutch oven. That'll be interesting. <laughs> Come on. Right, there we go. I'll let that double in size in there. Put a bit of flour on the top. Put the lid on it. And I'll come back in a couple of hours to see how much it's risen. But the sourdough starter seems to be working quite well. 24 hours later, my bread is ready for baking into the oven for 30 minutes on 200 degrees Fahrenheit, or sorry, 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes and then another 30 minutes on 350. All finished. I'm happy with the look at this loaf I'll slice it up shortly 
Oh, just look at that. Great texture. The crust is really nice. Mmm. And the flavour is delicious. So I think it's a great success. Remember this was using the leftover discard from my test. 422 grams of leftover. Um, so I'm very happy that I didn't have to uh, waste it. Anyway, that's my journey with sourdough. And what I'm going to do with these today is I'm going to divide them all and put them into one jar and just have one culture of sourdough starter. So I'm going to take a piece from each of these to make up to 50 grams and put it into here and then feed it with a uh, 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water and let it rise uh, for 24 hours and see how we progress. So I'm going to take 20 grams from each of those jars, combine it into one and feed it uh, with some more flour and I'll just have one mother for sourdough. Well, 100 grams from my original jars and the discard I'll make into bread today and make up a recipe as I go. 200 grams of flour added 200 mils of water added uh, All my jars are emptied and I've got 437 grams of discard and just like yesterday I'm going to make it into a loaf of bread again and you might ask what do you do with all that bread? Well, I have chickens so if we don't eat it I can certainly give it to my chooks. Go, I've got my discard in my bread maker 435 grams. So I've got all my ingredients weighed out, my flour, my oil, sugar, salt and I'm using this recipe on the side. I've changed the amount slightly because I just want a tighter dough so instead of 550 grams I'm using 500 grams, oh sorry 600 grams of flour. Now over to the bread maker because I don't want to stand there mixing. I've selected number eight on my bread maker and press start and it will do the kneading for me. And away we go again making another loaf of sourdough with a starter it had been dormant in my fridge without any feeding for two years. Incredible. So it's very resilient. And if you make a loaf of bread like that, which I made this morning, and my other one will be ready to bake tomorrow. <laughs> Well, my dough is finished kneading in the bread maker and now I'm just going to stretch it. And everybody's got their own way of doing sourdough. And I think I've created another technique, especially for those who like to use a bread maker uh, and they don't want to knead their dough. Now I'll boil it up and put it in my pan. Mine 
as I said, my, my the way I do my sourdough is a little bit different um, to some of the ways I've seen it described on YouTube, but it seems to work. Okay, I'm going to try and boil it up and put it in my pan with one hand. And I'll leave it there to rise until it's double in size. And I'll cover it with some flour. And then tomorrow morning I'll bake it. So this is using discard from active discard from my tests that I, if you've been watching me, I don't like to waste things. So there we go. And when I'm ready to bake it this time, I'll try putting a cut in it, which I haven't been doing. And instead of covering it with the lid this time, I'm going to cover it with a cloth because I found yesterday, or rather I found this morning when I took the lid off, there was a whole lot of condensation on the inside of the lid. So it does sweat a lot when it's rising. So I'll let this rise. I'm just going to leave it on the bench for 24 hours and bake it in the morning. Check in the next morning. Oh, look at that. It has risen double. So I'm going to score the top and pop it in the oven. And looking at my dough, it has risen. You can see that little line there above the elastic, which means it's risen and then it's dropped. Risen and dropped, so it needs to be fed, which I'll do that later this morning. So I've cut the top with this pair of scissors this time actually and going to pop her in the oven now. 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. I better put on the lid and I'll take that off in a half an hour and drop the temperature to 350. Now look at that. That is perfect. I think I'm getting the knack of making sourdough bread. Now I'm going to go outside and eat what I made yesterday with honey and jam on it. So I'm just perfecting making sourdough. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> my journey. Just look at that. Nice hard crust. Oh, to cut it. Look at that, that's just delicious, beautiful texture. Yummo, another successful sourdough journey. And I love the pattern that I've created on the top here. But I hope you found that useful. And yeah, more journeys with sourdough coming. Talk to you later. Okay, it's finished kneading. I'm going to pull it out and put it on here and shape it and then pop it into this bowl. Just stretching the dough. Holding it over. Right now, we'll round it up into a ball and put it into my new bowl. We're going to get creative and bake my sourdough into different shaped bowls.
And this one will probably end up rising quite high above this bowl. It's probably a bit small, so that will be interesting. Leave it there to rise until tomorrow morning and we'll bake it off. Sweet. Right, covered and in 24 hours or less, because it's half past 10 uh, in the morning, I'll cook it first thing when I get 24 hours later, it's risen double. I'll cut the top and pop it in the oven. I'm making deep cuts, which apparently is necessary when you make sourdough. Into the oven she goes. Now this time I'm going to do it a little bit different. I am not going to put a lid on it and I want a bit more crispier top. 400 degrees Fahrenheit for half an hour and then 325 Fahrenheit for half an hour. 100 grams of starter for this morning for my next lot of bread. I've divided up my old starter and I'm getting ready to bake a new loaf in a different shape. So my ingredients are in there and I'm using this recipe this time. So into the bread maker I go. an adjustment to my recipe and using 500 grams of flour now because I've added the extra 100 grams. First 30, minute, first 30 minutes is up. It's looking good. Now I'll turn it down. Well all cooked. Very interesting top because I didn't do a Dutch oven this time um, but I'm just trying out different ways to cook sourdough and in different containers. My next uh, venture will be to cook sourdough in this little loaf pan which should be big enough to hold a 500 gram loaf. So that's in the bread maker making at the moment. Anyway this is this one. Um, I'll leave it in there to cool for a little while and then take it out and slice it. Well it's cut it's got a really good texture, so I'm quite happy with that. Oh, it's finished kneading in the bread maker and I'm going to put it out here and knead it and pop it into this shape tin. Okay, this dough is a little bit um, softer. So it's a bit stickier, but I think that's actually going to work out better in the long run. Stretch it a bit. And try and put it in my oblong container. I'll leave it there and cook it off tomorrow. Leave it for 24 hours. 
The next day it's risen double and I'm going to do it a little bit different this time. I'm going to actually um, cook it in this container and um, see how it goes. I want it to be more like a slice um, so you can make sandwiches. Okay, put the lid on it. Pop it into the oven on 400 degrees for half an hour and then I'll turn it down to 350 for another half an hour with the lid off. Lid off and it's looking good. Wow, take a look at this one. I'm really happy with that. I'll slice it up shortly and see what it, how it cuts and what it tastes like. What a cute little loaf. Oh, the colour is really good. Now I'm going to slice it. Well, the texture is really good. As you can see, it's still very hot. I couldn't wait to cut it. Uh, so it's, it's still a bit sticky, but I think you could say that this was a great success. So cooking in that tin. Oh, so good. Well, I hope you enjoyed my journey of sourdough. And these are all the breads that I've made over the last week since we started with my experiment of resurrecting a two-year-old culture. Just incredible. Which originally started from these starters which as I said had been in the fridge for two years and I made it three years ago and I revitalized and resurrected these and my first bread that I made was this one I used somebody else's recipe and then this was the next one then gradually as you can see getting better even better to this beauty here quite incredible now i have put my dough to sleep because i don't think i need to bake any more bread for a while and uh, i have put it to sleep the way that i heard on youtube and that is you just mix it to a really stiff dough you don't add any water after it's risen and then you put a whole lot of flour on top and you can keep it like that in the fridge for a long while. As I did, I kept mine for two years without being used. And of course these now, I, had, I put water in them to resurrect them and some other things. But they'd still be good to use. I can still see a few bubbles on the top of them. So, well that's got a good lot of bubbles. So I could still use these and start using them again to start a culture. But I'm going to start afresh with that one. Anyway, that was my journey with sourdough. Hope you enjoyed it. And yes, it's amazing stuff.